nation. We are two months away from enriching weapons-grade uranium to be used for peaceful purposes. When we're talking about a superpower, we're talking about a country that has global influence over others in cultural, technological, military, and political spheres. And China, whose Communist Party recently celebrated its 70th anniversary, is emerging as a strong contender for the position. While the U.S. has been the world's superpower for a long time, escalating political tension between the U.S. and China may lead us to wonder, is China the next superpower? You pay a goal. What's a phi? I don't understand a phi. There's a V in the word. It's five. Uh, I don't got these in China. Not Chinese. I'm Korean. The history of China is both fascinating and intricate. Its culture has been described as both peaceful and warlike. China was created by conquest and has essentially always been ruled by warlords. However, China has also experienced periods of peace and trade with other countries. There have been long periods where China isolated itself from the outside world and became a closed society. These experiences have really shaped the Chinese culture and strategic thought. The ascension of the Chinese economy to global preeminence is not without precedent. China was, after all, one of the largest economies in the world from the Song Dynasty until the 19th century's Great Divergence, when European industrialization facilitated the long period of Western economic dominance that today's generations know all too well. China's bid to become the world's economic superpower has been a long time coming. Following the economic stagnation and isolationism of Chairman Mao's leadership 50 years ago, China has developed a sophisticated high-tech economy that is the envy of many in the Western world. Mao Zedong, a key part of this was a massive infrastructure drive. China owns more high-speed rail than the rest of the world put together and has the busiest, largest ports and container storages on the planet. Middle-class growth is also tangible with home ownership on the rise. Concerning the virus's impact on the global economy, what is certainly not lacking from commentary is the price fluctuations of oil, decreased agricultural output, decreasing exports, and unemployment figures. From this, one may well form the opinion that the coronavirus pandemic has also negatively affected China's prospects of taking pole position in the economic race. In reality, we may be on the cusp of a reordering of economic superpowers. Despite China supposedly losing the recent trade wars against the US, the COVID-19 pandemic could be the final big push that catapults the Chinese economy ahead in the world order. The economic ramifications of lockdown are clear to even the layman. Fiscal packages and bailouts have been the most common ways Western countries have responded to the crisis, while China's strict reaction to the pandemic, which has succeeded in controlling the spread of the virus, lies in its ability to firmly curtail people's freedoms, and as a result, the economy. Its centralized government has a capacity that extends beyond most Western democracies, enabling it to act swiftly and enforce measures well. It has capitalized on both. Since March, 33 million people have lost their jobs in America, which absolutely dwarfs the unemployment fallout the coronavirus has caused in China. This contributes further to China's advantage. It's also compounded the economic gains that China has made since the turn of the millennium. In America, President Donald Trump has encouraged states to reopen as they see fit, but the U.S. so far has lagged in providing the tools that were needed to do that safely, namely tests to detect the disease and tracking outbreaks. Over the course of the pandemic, the U.S. has so far tested around 9 million people, less than 3% of its population. Meanwhile, Beijing announced plans to test all 11 million of the city's residents in 10 days. What is happening to the Chinese economy as a result of the coronavirus is not the shrinking of the economy, nor decreased domestic or external demand. Factories and shops are opening ahead of other countries. As a result, China won't get hit as hard as the United States. But it's not just that businesses will have to remain shut for longer, it's also which businesses are the most affected. The U.S. economy is far more reliant on the service industry, shopping malls, restaurants, hotels, and it is this industry that is more affected by social distancing measures. China is further advantaged by the size of its agricultural sector, which is 10 times larger than the USA's, and it's an area of the economy that is significantly less affected by social distancing. 
The pandemic, therefore, will affect the world's largest economic power a lot more than its rising star. When the coronavirus emerged in December, China acted very quickly and forcefully to halt it in its tracks. It forced a population equivalent to a fifth of humanity to barricade themselves at home and hoisted up the drawbridge to visitors. Those draconian measures cost China an unprecedented 6.8% drop in GDP in the first quarter, but they worked. The country's official infection count is now below 85,000, compared to the 1.3 million in the US. The US response to COVID-19 has been so muddled, it's not possible yet to say how much of the sluggishness is caused by unreadiness, how much to incompetence, and how much to the American system of governance, with its emphasis on individual freedoms over centralized authority. What seems clear is that the performance of the Chinese system of broad state controls over both citizens and the economy offers Beijing a unique chance to steal a march on the future. During a recent tour of China's northern province of Shanxi, President Xi Jinping instructed cadres to turn the crisis into an opportunity. How well China succeeds in doing so could have ramifications for the entire world order. <laughs> hey guys, hope you enjoyed the video. We make business related video essays like this every week. So if you're interested in entrepreneurship, business and startups, like this video and subscribe to this channel.